Today in our 2014 Dodge Journey, we're going to be taking a look at, then we're going to show you how to install the Tow Ready T1 vehicle wiring harness with the four pole flat trailer connector. Part number is 118536. Now here's our wiring kit when we pull it out of the box. Now this is going to be the perfect solution for getting a four pole flat trailer connector to the rear of your journey when your vehicle is equipped with the LED tail lights. Now this kit offers us the left, right turn and brake. It's also going to give us running lights and a ground from our vehicle to our trailer so everything works appropriately. The heart of the system is going to be our converter box. Now this box is going to take signal from behind the tail lights. You can see we've got our yellow for the driver's side here. And it just plugs directly in between the plug that's on the back of the tail light housing. It's really straightforward and really simple. There's no splicing or cutting of the wires. The red and brown is going to stay on the driver's side as well. That's for our stop and for our running light signal. Then the green wire, you'll see it's a little bit longer. This we're going to run over to the passenger side and up behind that tail light. But the box is then going to take that and convert it into a usable signal that our trailer is going to recognize so all of our lights will work. You know, trailer, cargo carrier, whatever you might be using it for. Now this box is a standalone kit, so it gets its power from the battery. We're not going to have to worry about it drawing power from our lighting circuits. It's going to get that directly from the battery. You'll see our white wire here. It's got a ring terminal on it. We're going to use that for ground. Now they've provided you with a good kit of hardware to help your installation along. You've got your instructions. You've got a fuse holder here for where we connect to the battery, so this is going to help keep everything protected. Now since I'm making the connections on the outside of the vehicle, the two yellow butt connectors that the kit comes with, I'm going to be replacing with part number DW05745. It's the same principle, it's a butt connector, but these are heat shrink, so we're going to use a heat source to shrink those down and seal up our connections so we won't have to worry about any moisture or corrosion. Now on each of our tail lights right here on the inside, there's going to be push pin fasteners. So if we use our flat blade screwdriver, we want to pull that center core out. Once that's out, we can then pull the whole thing out. We just want to give it a little bit of a wiggle. We need to separate. There's a couple pressure clips right here on this edge. Once those are separated, look in behind our light, you'll see our two connectors. The one on the bottom here, use our screwdriver to lift up on that tab. We'll separate it. Then the larger one, there's a tab right there we're going to push. That's the same thing, just kind of push it. And then wiggle it on off there. Let's do the same thing for our driver's side. Now we'll grab our wiring kit. The green wire and plugs, we're going to allow those to go down under our vehicle. Do the same thing with our four pole wire. They both come out down here, and that's right where we want them. Just kind of let that slack out of there, get all of our wires where we want them. The one I'm going to do is take my black 12 volt wire that we're going to be running up to the battery, and I'm going to use that green wire to pull it up in here at the rear of the vehicle. I'm just going to take one end of that, use a little bit of electrical tape, and secure it off there. And if we pull on that green wire, we'll be able to bring that right up here where we can work with it. Now we want to strip the end of that wire back. We can also strip the one coming out of our box back just a little bit more. Make sure we've got plenty of wire there for our butt connector to bite on. We'll slide our butt connector on and get it crimped down. After you've done that, you should be able to pull on it without it separating. What we're going to do is just heat this up enough so you can see it where it'll start shrinking down. 
then once it's done properly, that wire actually looks like it magnifies. And you'll see that little clear glue or that clear gel that comes out of the end. Now this gives us superior water resistance. This is a connection that we will not have to be worried about in the future now. You'll see here on the back of our converter box, we've got some double-sided foam tape. What we need to do is clean off a good area to mount that to. Now I'm going to go to the flat spot that's right in here on that panel. And clean it off really well with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Peel that off and stick it right into place. We're going to use a quarter inch bit driver. We're going to secure our ground right into that nice little flat spot there. Now I'm going to use a little bit of dielectric grease. This is just a contact grease. It's going to prevent any corrosion or any moisture from getting in here in our plugs. This is part number 11755 if you don't have some at home. Then we can slide our connector together and you just want to listen for it to click. That one didn't click, but yours might. Should be able to, once you have them connected, give it a good pull and it won't come apart. And we'll do the same thing for our smaller connector here. It's going to plug into the red, brown, and white wire. Now we'll put a little bit there and we're ready to put our tail light back into place. We'll have these two pins here that we need to align with the holes on the outside there. Give it a little push to make sure those are in firmly. And then we'll slide our push pin fasteners back in each of our holes. If they separate, it's not a big deal. You just want to put the center back in just slightly. Slide it in and pop it to secure it. Now for routing our green wire over to our passenger side, a lot of times we'll run it in behind our bumper structure here and things like that, which is a reasonable thing to do here, but it's just going to be really hard to get into it. The end of the bumper is located right above the exhaust tip and it's nice and open. So if you take a thick piece of wire, what we've got is just airline tubing. I'm going to push it from the driver's side over to the passenger side. And then I'm just going to use that to draw my wire over. Now let's just get that taped off and get it drawn on over to our passenger side. Now from this point we should be able to grab it, just reach up and in and pass it out right up top there. Now with our four pole wire here, the only real choice we have is to follow the tube of our hitch down. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra here. Now as you can see, you're gonna have plenty of four pole wire. We're gonna be securing some of, some of it off up underneath the vehicle. So you shouldn't have an issue with whatever type of connector, wherever you need your connector to be, or however long of a connector you need, shouldn't have any issue at all in getting that secured. Now to go around the hitch, I'm going to be using some longer zip ties than what come with the kit, so you might want to plan ahead with that. And as I do secure it, I'm going to secure it on the back side, that way we're not going to see that green, yellow, and white wire running all the way across. Now we just use the zip tie and get our excess secured up and out of the way. And if our customer ever needs any more, it's going to be up there and readily available. Now our 12 volt wire, we need to run that up toward the battery on the vehicle. 
As we do, we want to avoid significant sources of heat or any sharp edges, any pinch points that might cause damage to it. We'll use our zip ties as we go. And again, as before, you might want to have a few extras on hand. I tend to kind of overdo it with the zip ties, so I figured better, the more secure we have it, the better. I'm going to run up over the exhaust, keeping it nice and tight up there so we don't have any issues with it touching it. And then right up here, we're going to have a wire loom. I'm going to secure it right off to that. It'll give us a good anchor point. Now we're right here behind our gas tank now. I'm gonna to go to the outside driver's side. There we can pick up our fuel and brake lines and head to the front with those. Now's a good time to get another thick piece of wire, or we're gonna use airline tubing again, just to kind of help us get behind that heat shroud. Now we can just kind of run up and over the heat shroud here. And I like to use the brackets or the hangers here for the lines to go up over top of them. And we'll use zip ties along the way as well. Now once we get up to this point, we're going to keep following the lines, but they're going to go towards the front driver's side corner, which is where we want them. That's where we're going to pick up our 12 volt connection. We want to establish a couple of good anchor points down here so we never have to worry about our wire ever hanging down below our vehicle. Now's a good time for a stiff piece of wire again, or airline tubing. We'll go right up that direction, kind of towards that front corner, like we said. All right, stick as much of it up in there as we can. Now we'll go up top, try to find it, and pull through. We just want to make sure that this entire loop of wire comes up so we don't have any slack down here. Pull that up through, confirm that we've got all of our slack out, and then I like to anchor it off at that point so we never have to worry about it hanging down. Now we'll just trim our wire up, giving us a little bit of extra in case we ever need to make any changes. I'm going to cut our fuse holder there at about 4 o'clock. Get these two stripped and also our black wire. Put our butt connector in place there. The longer size here of our fuse holder is going to go into the butt connector. Now the provided ring terminal we're going to place on the other side. We'll get it crimped down. Now if we pull up right on the back edge of this red cover, see that's going to pop open. That's going to give us access to the stud. We're going to put that right down on there. 15 millimeter socket. We just want to take that nut off. Place our ring terminal right down over that. And then put our nut back on. Now that shrink down, let's use a zip tie to secure wiring. I like to go in the hole right in the bottom of the fuse holder.
and we'll hold off on putting our fuse in just until we get our passenger side tail light put back into place. Now that our tail light connections here, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to put some dielectric grease on. Get that plugged in. Now so we don't have any of our wire that decides it wants to hang out down below the vehicle, I think it's a good idea to zip tie this up. Now we can plug our connectors from our wiring harness right back in there and slide this tail light back into position as well. When that seat's in there, just put your push pin fasteners back in. We'll put the fuse and the fuse holder up front, and we'll be ready to test out our wiring. Now to test out our wiring, we're going to use part number I26. We'll slide that in, and we'll go run through the lights, and we should see our lights correspond with what we do up front. Start by turning on our headlights, get our running lights to light up. We'll do our left blinker, do our right blinker, and we'll also do our brakes. Now with everything working as it should, that's going to complete our installation of the Tow Ready T1 vehicle wiring harness with the four pole flat trailer connector. Part number 118536 on our 2014 Dodge Journey. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.